they're talking about emotional triggers, what I call trigger troubles in marriage. Now, let's be honest, these apply in any relationship, right? Now, they apply to all humans. And, and so we're going to talk about that a little bit. Now, what is it I mean by triggers and where do these triggers come from? Well, let's talk about what I mean by a trigger. A trigger is an intense an emotional reaction, all right? It, it's when, when you get emotionally triggered, that emotional trigger that you have because of something that happened, the best definition I've seen came from Dr. Lori Gordon, that it's, it's, a, um, it's an intense emotional reaction. So it comes from the center of the brain and the emotional part of the brain known as the limbic system. And that's also linked to what's called the brain stem and the, what I refer to as the, the lower order brain, um, which is where the fight, flight, or freeze response comes from. It's an intense reaction to an event. In other words, something happens out here in life, right? You see something or you smell something or you hear something. And whenever you experience some event, something that happened, all right, when you have that, that event takes place, your brain sees it. And at one, two thousandths of a second, you have an emotional reaction. Now, Dr. Lori Gordon called that an emotional allergy. Uh, other therapists have different names for it. All right. Everyone knows it happens. So uh, the emotional trigger is an intense emotional reaction to an event, to something that happened or to something that you Saw or smell, right? It didn't have to be something out here. Could just be a song. It could be a smell. It's an intense emotional reaction to an event or some stimuli that is in the present, that is in the present, but is linked to something in the past or past belief systems. We'll talk about that in a little bit, all right? So uh, the trigger is an intense emotional reaction to something that happens or some stimuli that is in the present. The, the trigger is in the present, but the reaction is actually a reaction, reaction because your brain is interpreting the thing that happened in the present. It's linked to something in your past. It's linked to something in your past, something that happened to you. Now, why does the brain react this way? Why does the brain react to issues or stimuli in the present with this intense fight, fight, or freeze response? The answer is simple. Survival. Survival. You see, the brain is wired to do one thing really, really well for you. The brain is wired for you to survive. It's all really care. I mean, it, it'll it'll make sure your blood, you know, uh, your blood, your heart's pumping and blood, and that you're breathing. It does all those things. Right? This lower part of the brain back here, it runs all those autonomic bodily functions for you. But the brain has a one overarching responsibility for the human: it's to make sure you survive. As a matter of fact, all mammals have this part of a brain. All animals, all mammals have a fight, flight, or freeze response. All of them. I remember when I was young, we we cornered a possum. Me and my brother had been <coughs> doing some things and we needed to catch it and we caught it. And we trapped it in a cage. Well, when we came towards that cage, that possum went to the back end of the cage and just started releasing its bowels. It was, you, it couldn't control it. It just released its bowels. You go, why? It's the flight response. The brain of that possum saw this threat as kids coming up towards it and it couldn't go anywhere. And, and that's the flight response. The brain was getting the body ready of all excess weight so that it could run. The problem is when it was in a cage and couldn't. You'll see this same response a lot of times, well, a lot of times in, in combat. A lot of guys know in the military that before you go into the combat, into a combat zone, get rid of your, go, go take a dump, go use the bathroom. Why? Because a lot of guys in combat, when something happens, they'll mess in their pants. Why? It's the flight response of the brain. 
It's the brain getting rid of all excess material so they can do the one thing it needs to do, run to survive. That's normal. And so our brain is wired for survivor, for survival. <coughs> and the fight, flight, and freeze response of the brain is a survival mechanism. If your brain doesn't have the ability to think at this level, it just reacts. It just reacts. The flight response is when your brain basically says, look, I've got to run from this threat. It's a stress response. You're feeling, you're feeling threatened by this thing out here. And so your brain just think, says, run, get away from it. I grew up in a home where I was always put down by my stepmother, never, ever affirmed or approved or accepted by her. And my dad was on some level, but he also had his anger problem. And, you know, he bought a cow prop when I was 10 or 11, he used to shock us. And, and though he had his good side, he had his dark side. But um, <clears throat> one thing that my brain learned to do really early in life was run, just to run. And, and so I, I really developed the flight response really well. When conflict would show up in a relationship, I'd shut down, pull away. When the flight response happens in human relationships, a lot of times you'll see something like this. It'll look like if you're in the flight response, like, ah, oh. ah, oh. oh. And then you hear things like this. My wife's name, Luella. All right, Luella, fine, whatever. You know what? <clears throat> just, just do it your way. I, I don't, I don't really care. I, I didn't really matter to me. In the relationship, your brain feels a threat. And so a lot of times when you see that kind of behavior, that's the flight response. Your brain saying, get away. Your brain also does what's called a fight response. Now, the fight response, you get adrenaline just like you do in the um, flight response. You, in the flight response, you get adrenaline to run. In the fight response, you get adrenaline to attack. The fight response is when the brain says, look, I feel threatened by you. So the posture of the fight response is this. A good defense is a good offense. I'll squash you before you can squash me. You see? Uh, now, after you squash that person, because when, you, when you're in a fight response, man, you're argumentative. You're loud. You're condescending. You, you, you attack. You criticize right? You never take responsibility. It can look like this, you know, shut up. Who do you think you are? You're just like your mother. You know, you, you don't know what you're talking about. And a lot of times when you're, when you're in the fight response, if you're sitting down, you're going to stand up. Why? Because your drilling is going to push your body up. Why? Because it's about power. And usually you see something like this, you know, who do you think you are? You're just like your mother. You know, don't talk to me that way. Because what's the brain doing? The brain is trying to squash the other person so that the brain won't feel threatened by that person. Once you squash that person, you will feel safe. Remember, this part of the brain is all about safety. But though you feel safe, you've just damaged two things. You've damaged the relationship and your partner. But that's all right. I feel safe. It's very destructive. And then the third response of the brain is called the freeze response. This is when fight and flight isn't working and your brain feels so threatened your brain just shuts down. Here, people move into depression. People become stoic, distant, cold. You communicate like a super reasonable com computer. What you're saying here it is, I'm not going to deal with your emotions and I ain't dealing with mine. And because I'm not dealing with yours or mine, all we'll do is talk about the facts and we just won't talk at all. And when a person's in a freeze response there, they are shut down emotionally. It's a, it's a brain self-protective mechanism. When fight and flight doesn't work, you just freeze. Problem is whenever you try and communicate or solve problems from this lower order animal brain, fight, fright, or freeze part, you'll never solve problems. You never deal with conflict. Well, You'll never, ever be able to communicate and build intimacy. Why? Because this part of the brain doesn't think of relationships. This part of the brain is purely about survival. This part of the brain is purely about what I need to do to survive and be healthy. And that means if I have to squash you, I will. If I have to run from you, I will. Or if I have to shut down with you, I will. But we're not going to have a relationship.